G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru. Today we're going to be looking at uh, continuing to build some door families. So we're going to be specifically looking today at working on the Revit door leaf. So we're going to be focusing on maintaining an openable 3D door and also looking at some door protection. So I'd like to thank again Wojciech for requesting this series um, and I hope that you're enjoying it. So the running order, um, we've looked at frames to begin with and also hinge sets. And now we're gonna put a leaf on that hinge set and some protection on that leaf as well. Previously, we actually built an array of hinges um, and we made sure that the angle was adjustable. Also, as well as that, if the frame changed, then it also respectively changed the hinge and there were some visibility settings to stop everything showing in floor plan. Now it's important to note there were some challenges with the angle in the hinge set and I have figured out why that is and I've fixed it. So definitely make sure you download the content from GitHub for this uh, previous video before you begin today because we're going to be building on from this content. But today we're looking at further continuing our exploration of angled constraints in order to open our door. We're going to reuse some components. In this case, we're going to use the hinge to generate the leaf um, and change some object styles to suit. We're also gonna be just building the leaf itself and adding some parameters to it, as well as adding some door protection that's nested to the leaf and hosted to the face of the leaf so that when the door opens, as well as that, so will the protection move with the door, which is gonna lead on to our next video where we look at our hardware, which will be very similar. So let's get started. So I'm just gonna jump straight into Revit in this case. Um, this is what we're aiming for. So we're aiming for a door that has a fully adjustable angle and the hinges and the leaf move as well. And we'll animate this door at the end using Dynamo as well, just for a little bit of fun. So in this case, I'm gonna start with my previous door. So in this case, I just have a set of content. Um, so I'm gonna open my single door. So this is sort of where we were last time. We have a frame and we have a set of hinges. Now there was a problem at this point where the angle wasn't working. So I believe if we went to something like say 135, in this case, it looks like it's okay, but I did find that I did have to reload the hinges um, to an updated set. So what I've done differently since the last part, which sort of fixed the hinge problem, if I just open up the hinge set from GitHub, I changed the way that the hinge itself was constrained. So if I open up the nested hinge, I just made some small, some small updates to how I dimensioned everything. So in this case, I made sure that I was reflecting a 90 degree angle from both corners I updated the depth and I just associated an angle to both reference planes. And this seemed to support in this case, like a, a reflex angle. So like a 135 degree angle, for example. And this should um, stop it breaking at the, the higher or more acute angles in this case. So we can see that we can fully open the door throughout the range. Now I'm actually gonna begin with this hinge. So I'm gonna keep this hinge open because I'm gonna turn this into my door leaf because I already have some pretty key constraints set up that I can reuse in the case of a door leaf. So I'm gonna go save as, and I'm just gonna save this family. I'm gonna make a new subfolder called leaf. Um, in this case, I'll just go to, I think my desktop. Yep, and I'm just gonna clear out these elements. So I'm just gonna call this uh, BG door C leaf type one. And I'm gonna turn this thing into a leaf. So I'm firstly gonna change some of the semantics of what the parameters are called. Now I'm gonna maintain the hinge thickness, but I'm gonna change my hinge depth to leaf thickness in this case. I'm gonna make the leaf thickness a type parameter again. Um, but otherwise everything else is okay at the moment. Now we are gonna also have to obviously add a door leaf. So we're actually gonna be adding the door leaf to the face of this reference plane onwards. So in this case, I'm gonna maintain everything, except I'm obviously gonna get rid of some of this hinge geometry that I no longer need. And we're essentially building with this being the inside face of the frame. So what I'm gonna do is make a model line and I'm gonna make it an invisible line. Just so when I select my leaf um, in, in the uh, family environment, I'll get this little hint as to where the reference plane I need to constrain is located. So I'm just gonna align this to the depth of the, of the leaf and I'm just gonna align it back here. So this is gonna be the reference plane that we constrain our door leaf to, the right plane. Okay, so what I need to do now is actually, I need to change my leaf. It's gonna be actually going in the opposite direction. So I'm gonna edit extrusion and I'm just gonna deconstrain it. And my leaf is essentially building off the face instead. So I actually need another reference line. So I'm gonna copy and paste this reference line and I'm gonna trim. And in this case, I'm gonna trim that reference line 
to these ones. Now at this point, I'm going to take the chance just to redimension and reconstrain this a little bit, just to make sure that everything's perfectly constrained. So I'm going to hide my leaf. While I've got my leaf selected, I'm actually going to change its subcategory to panel as well. Um, and I'm going to change its vertical extent. So I'm going to go to front view. So now we actually want to just make it based from the, the floor up. Now in this case, I'm going to associate a new parameter to this and I'm going to associate height. And I'm just going to go and change height to 2040 for the leaf height. I'm going to unlock the width and I'm going to make that 920 for the leaf width. As well as that, I'm going to make the height an instance parameter by selecting it and just ticking that on. In this case, I'm not actually going to host this element to the top or the bottom, so I'm going to remove this constraint. And I'm just going to set this to height, so it's one less constraint to worry about. And I'm also going to add a parameter here so I can undercut my door leaf. So maybe I'll want to push it up by a certain number sometimes. So let's just associate a parameter here, make a new parameter. I'm going to call it undercut. I just make it an instance based parameter so that different leaves can have different undercuts if you need when you nest them into a door family. Because remember, sometimes you might have like a double door family that has more than one leaf. Now, usually the undercut would be constant and apply to both of them, but I like to keep things flexible where possible. Okay, so we're just going to hide this and we're just going to work on reconstraining some of these elements. So I'm going to go to angle. And first of all, I'm going to get my angular dimension. And in this case, I'm going to go to the main plane here. So my origin plane. And I'm just going to constrain these two reference lines. In this case, I'm going to associate the open angle parameter to them. I'm also going to make sure that this line is always at 90 degrees, in this case, to the primary reference plane. I'll just add another one there and another one there. And all these constraints should be enough to keep everything sitting perpendicular. Now, I may not need one of these. I might have overkilled it, but we'll see if it accepts them all. Yeah, I've added one too many, so we don't need that one in this case, because we're actually telling this one to remain at the open angle. I believe I could actually not worry about this one here, and I could just make another 90 degree constraint. This would keep everything just controlled by a single angle parameter, probably a bit neater. Okay, I'm also going to go back and just add my hinge thickness to these two specific references. So I'll make that my hinge thickness. I've got my leaf thickness, but I also need it on the door leaf itself. So I'm going to make that my leaf thickness. And then I also need my leaf width. And this is the distance off the hinge itself. So this is going to be where we add this leaf width parameter. So I'll add width and I'll make that an instance parameter. We, sometimes the angles go a little bit funny, they, they get pretty big. Um, you can try to sort of recreate them at a more manageable scale. But remember, everything is a reference line at the moment. So what I'm going to do first before I start flexing this to test it is I'm just going to reconstrain my leaf. So I'm just going to delete all these extrusion lines. I'm going to pick line, pick line pick line and I'm going to trim and I'm going to pick the long side first. It looks like the long side actually automatically trims back. So that's fine. But usually I try to pick the long side first. It seems to behave better if you do ever need to trim them, but that should be okay. So let's test this. Let's just change it to say 135. In this case, it looks like the constraints are breaking, but it's only the extrusion where the constraints are breaking, which is quite interesting. So I'm going to try reconstraining this. I'm going to pick line, pick line, now in this case, I'm actually going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to try trimming and then aligning back to the reference line. I found sometimes this is necessary in order to sort of inform the geometry how you want it to transform. This can sometimes be needed just, just, just to guide the elements a little bit. Um, I have found the angular constraints, they don't always work as easily as you'd like them to, unfortunately. Let's try trimming that back and now let's just try working with this instead. Hopefully this will work with us. Okay, that looks better. That seems to know how to behave now. Cool, there we go. So it looks like at this point we have a family that's willing to play ball with us. Um, usually I like to keep the leaf in a reflex position because um, I find sometimes the leaf won't behave how you want it to at a reflex angle if you don't keep it in its default condition opened wider than 90 degrees. 
it's just one of those behavioral things I found that Revit sometimes does to you, which is a little bit frustrating, but just keep it in mind. So at this point, just keep in mind that we can use this little invisible line to guide us as to the direction our door is currently facing. So this is what I call the external face and the inside face here is what I call the internal face. So when the door is shut, the external face faces out from the frame and the internal face faces into the door jam. Okay, so at this point we have um, effectively a door leaf. Um, so what we're gonna do is load this down into our door family. So back in our door family, I'm just gonna load this. I'm gonna go to floor plan and I'm just gonna place this 3D door leaf on a work plan. I'm gonna place it at the reference level of the family. I'm just gonna quickly test flexing the door. Make sure that it works as intended. You should be able to go all the way from zero to 180 and you probably can go past 180 as well. But in this case, it doesn't really matter. So I'm just gonna go 45 for now. Now we can associate a few parameters to this element. So we can go to the type parameters and we can associate the leaf thickness parameter that we set up in the last part. We can also add a finish parameter. So I'm gonna add a shared parameter in this case. And in this case, I'm gonna to go to my materials uh, parameters for doors. So it's just a shared material parameter. And I'm gonna make uh, the material leaf in this case. So I'm just gonna make this, in this case, an instance space parameter. And as well as that, I'm just gonna associate the hinge thickness as well. So in this case, the hinge thickness, I believe is gonna be something we need to set up. So at the moment we have a hinge thickness of three. Um, we are gonna to need to associate a parameter that is half of that to be the hinge thickness. Now there's a few ways we could do this, probably a better way is actually to go down to the family level and set up that parameter. So we're gonna go and reopen that leaf and we're gonna create just a little formula. So we're gonna say that the hinge gap is gonna be the hinge thickness times two. So we'll make a parameter called hinge gap. We'll make it uh, uh, type based in this case. And we're just gonna say that hinge gap is three and it's equal to hinge thickness times two. Actually, no, the other way around. We say that hinge thickness is hinge gap on two. Now we can directly associate that same parameter at the family level. So I'm going to overwrite, I'm going to go back to the type properties and I'm just, now I can associate hinge gap to hinge gap. So that three is now correlated and we can leave this one alone because this is actually driven by hinge gap. I'll just take off the type mark. We've also got some instance parameters to set as well. So firstly, we have our leaf height, which we set up on our last part. We have the angle at which the door will open. We also have the undercut which in this case, we're just gonna to need to add a new shared parameter for. So in this case, I have a dimension parameter under doors called undercut, which will add on an instance basis so that you can undercut the door on an instance basis. And I'm also just gonna add a leaf width parameter to the width of the door. Otherwise, we'll just take off the mark, but we're in business. So now we need to align our door. So remember that little invisible line that I added to sort of guide us to the alignment plane? Well, we're gonna use that. So we're gonna to align to the inside face of the frame uh, to the edge face of the hinge set. Because remember, that's where we justified our hinge family from as well. So I'm gonna align and I'm gonna find that little invisible line reference, which is the right plane, which is actually here. So I can see down in the bottom left corner that I'm re referencing the right plane. I'm gonna align and I'm just gonna align back to the face as well. And we should end up with a leaf and a hinge that sit respective to one another because we essentially built the families from the same template. So now we have a 3D openable door leaf at this point. So I should be able to close the door or set its angle to say something like 45. But there we go, we have a fully functional set of hinges and a door leaf that works with them too. So we'll just set this to 45 degrees for now. Now another little trick is if you want to control the door finish faces separately, so you want to have an internal paint finish and an external paint finish, there's a really handy trick you can use for that. So back in the leaf, if I go create and I go to the type properties and I make two parameters, in this case I'll say external finish and I'm just making this a family parameter. And I make, make it a material parameter and then I also add another one called internal finish. And I'll make that an instance parameter and a material parameter as well. And then I can call this uh, core, core finish. Um, I'm gonna leave these as an instance based parameter for now. 
So remember, currently I'm looking at the external face and the internal face on the other side. So if I go to modify, I can actually paint surfaces with parameter values. So if I go to paint, I'll have any materials that are in the project, but I also have parameters. So I can actually paint the external face with the external finished material parameter. Likewise, I can paint the internal face. And this will give you independent control over the surface materials of a single extrusion. Now keep in mind that the leaf itself is still being controlled by the core finish. So inside, in the sandwich of that element, if you cut through the element, you'll still see like a timber core, for example. So what I can do is now take that leaf, load it back in, overwrite, and I can actually go and change some of these parameters. So in this case, I'll just go edit type and make sure, looks like my core finish is still a type-based parameter. That's probably okay, actually. We can probably associate that at a type level because the door core is probably always the same for each leaf. In this case, I'm just going to add this as a shared parameter. I'm going to go to my material parameters for doors and I'm just going to add my leaf core finish. And I'm going to make this a type parameter. So I'm going to add that as a type based parameter. And then I'm going to add my external finish as a shared parameter from my material parameters for doors. And I'm going to add my leaf external finish. And I'm going to make this an instance face parameter. Likewise, I'll do the same for the internal side of the leaf as well. And I'll show you how this works just by using a sample material. So now we have external and internal finishes. If I go to manage materials, we don't have any at the moment, so I might have to load one in. Um, but what I might do as well is just go to my type properties and I'm just gonna remove my leaf finish parameter because we don't need that anymore because now we've separated our leaf finish into external and external and internal sides. So I'm just gonna go to manage materials and I'm just gonna look for a few dud materials. So I'm gonna look for a wood for a door core and we'll just grab um, we'll just grab a cherry a birch finish, and then I'm just going to look for paint. And we're just getting a couple of default Autodesk materials at the moment, so don't worry too much about which one you use. Um, we'll just get the wall texture orange peel as well. <laughs> Strange name. Okay, so if I go to type properties, let's say in this case we want to make our leaf core birch, and we want to make our external finish orange peel. And let's say we want to make our internal finish orange peel as well, but I'm just going to duplicate this material, duplicate its asset, and I'm just going to change its color just to say something like purple. So it's really obvious that it's different. Okay, so now if I go to shaded view, see how we've got different finishes on both sides of the leaf? But in the door leaf itself, it's just using the core material. So we've essentially set up a method by which we can control all three interlayers of the door, um, which is quite powerful. And most people aren't aware that this is possible. So you can see we've got the core, the external and the internal side. So pretty powerful. I'll just change the color of the orange pill so you can really see the difference. There we go. So that's how you can control interleaf or sandwich finishes. But what I'm gonna do is just delete these for now. I'm gonna purge out all their assets that they've added to the family. And what we're going to look at now is adding a kick plate or a protection to either side of the door leaf. So in this case, I'm going to have to start an entirely new subfamily. So I'm going to go new family. And we're going to be using a face based family because we're going to nest this to the face of the door leaf. So as the door leaf opens and closes, it will move the protection with it. That way we don't have to constrain everything using angles so much easier. So we're going to make a generic model face based. And at the moment, this is going to be the bottom left corner of the kick plate respective to the door. So in this case, I'm just going to create a reference plane for the other side and for the top of the protection. I'm also going to create a reference plane at the bottom so that when the undercut comes into play, it also undercuts the protection height. So I'm going to make at this point a parameter associated here, which is the height of my door protection. Now keep in mind, I'm drawing on a face at the moment. I'm not drawing in floor plan. Well, I am in floor plan, but the floor plan is orientated to a face. So I'm going to add a new parameter and I'm going to call this parameter height override. And you'll see why I'm doing this soon. I want to make it so that the protection knows that if it's ever less than, than like two, it's just turned off. It's not present in the door. I'm going to add a width as well. And I'll just make this um, 920 by default. And in this case, I may change the category right now. Actually, I'm going to change its category up here to doors. Now I'm going to use the width parameter. And I'm just going to change that to an instance parameter. And I'm going to add a parameter for undercutting as well. So I'm just going to call that undercut. 
I'm not going to make that an instance based parameter. Now, before I forget, I'm just going to go and clean up this family so it doesn't pollute all the other families that's loaded into. So I'm just going to get rid of all the drafting patterns because we're not going to need those. I'm going to get rid of the line patterns as well so that we don't put these down into the project. And I'm going to get rid of all the materials that are here by default. I'm just going to hold down delete, all gone. And I'm just going to purge until they're gone. Now I'm going to add a new object style and I'm going to call this uh, protection. So this is the door protection subcategory that we're going to introduce to our project and our family. So I'm going to make an extrusion. I'm going to pick line and I'm just going to be picking lines around my undercut door. So this will be our protection. So when the undercut comes into play, it will push the protection up. I'm going to make sure the subcategory is set to that protection category we just made. And I'm going to add a material on an instance basis. I'm just going to call it protection finish. And we'll set this using a nested parameter at the leaf level. I'm going to make its thickness, which is, a, is the extrusion end uh, two. And then I'm just going to associate that with the thickness parameter as well. So at the moment, we should have parameters all setting things up. Now, one thing we don't have at the moment is how the height is going to be adjusted when it knows that it can't be a certain size. Because remember, if an extrusion becomes zero, it breaks and it will impact your family and give you a warning. So what I'm going to do is just temporarily change height override to height, just so I can turn it into an instance parameter. Then I'm going to turn this back to height override. So this override parameter is going to be a formula driven parameter that's going to protect the height of our, of our um, extrusion. I'm also going to associate a visibility parameter to our protection. And I'm just going to say protection on. I'm just going to make that instance based. And this is going to tell the protection when it shouldn't be vi visible. So when the extrusion would be nothing, it's just going to hide itself and it's going to override its height to a very small value so that nev it never breaks. These are really handy for these sorts of families. I'm just going to call this typical as well for the type name. Okay, so we, we need to figure out when this is going to be equal to zero or very close to zero. Let's say two millimeters. So I'm going to check the value of height minus undercut. So I'm going to say if, I'm going to put a bracket, and I'm going to say if height minus undercut, because we know that's the remaining height of our protection, is greater than two, then I'll just say it can be height. That's the value of height override. That way, if the height works, then it's just the height the user puts in. Otherwise, if it's going to break and it's less than two, which means it's probably going to be zero or it's going to be something very close to this, I'll just say, make it two. I'm then also going to say um, that if the height minus undercut is greater than two, um, I'm also going to use this condition to say that the protection must be on. So I'm going to pass this in as a condition so that when this, when this complies, the protection is also turned on. That way, if the protection's meant to be off and it's set to zero, you don't see a little two millimeter strip sitting at the bottom of the door. So that effectively protects your door from breaking. So if I said my undercut was 150 and my height was 150, well, obviously my, my protection doesn't work. You can see the formula sets it to two and then it turns it off. So it sort of protects it from breaking. We'll just say the undercut's 25 by default. So at this point, I essentially have a protection family that I can associate to the face of an element. I'm also gonna add flip controls under create, just in all directions. So I have full control over the orientation of this element because face-based elements sometimes don't know which way they need to face depending on their host. I'm just gonna go to 3D and make a nice little thumbnail. I'm just gonna turn off my door host in this case, whoops. I, need to, mm, I might need to keep it on actually. So what I'll do is just do a crop. So I'm just gonna crop down my view. And I'm not gonna change the visibility graphic settings of the protection at, the, at this level. I'm gonna change it at the next level so that we can see it when we're placing it. I'm just gonna make sure everything's purged. Great. I'm gonna save as, and I'm just gonna save this in the same folder as the leaf, but I'm gonna call this door C protection type one. I'm gonna load this into my leaf and we're gonna place this on the face of our leaf. So remember, this is the external face. So I'm gonna place on face. I'm then also just gonna make a new 3D view and just hide these dimensions so I can see what I'm doing. So that's our external protection. I'm just gonna create similar. Place on face, and I'm gonna place it this side. Now notice how it's sort of turned around by 180 degrees. That's why I've added the flip control. So now I can go, no, I want it to be like that. Now it knows that when you put it down at ref level, you can see it's relativity to the family. 
what we're going to do straight away is we're just going to nest in the undercut value to the leaf value. So now the undercut is one and the same. We're also going to nest the leaf width as well. So in this case, the width. So now this is always going to match the length of the door leaf. I need to go to floor plan now and constrain. So luckily we have some reference lines that we can really quickly and easily constrain these two. So in the case of this internal side, I'm always going to try and constrain to the origin of the family, which in this case is the left side of the protection. So do try to remember which side your origin was on. I'm just tabbing to make sure I'm always picking my reference lines, not my extrusion. But now we should have two sides of door protection, which are fully controllable. So now we just need to add the controls, right? So in this case, I don't even need to add a visibility parameter because when this thing becomes zero, my override formula kicks in and protects it from being broken and it just doesn't show up. So essentially now all you have to do is put in your door protection height. You don't have to put in, does the door have protection and does it have a height? It just needs the height. So when you schedule it, you can just say zero, zero protection height. In this case, this is my external protection. So I'm just gonna say uh, protection height uh, EXT for external. I'm gonna make it instance based and I'm also gonna go and do the same for the internal protection. So in this case, it's this side. And we're just gonna do the same, but obviously I'm gonna call this INT instead. As well as that, um, I'll just go and get rid of the marks that it's probably associated to them. It does, Revit does try to mark everything when you put it in, especially if it's a door, which is quite annoying. I'm also gonna add a material parameter here. So I'm gonna say that this is protection finish EXT instance based and I'm also going to go and do the same for the internal side this way we can nest these parameters at the door level so the user just controls everything at the door level but at this point we have a leaf that can open and shut with a nested um, nested uh, protection so I'm just going to save the leaf and we're just going to load this into our door family and now you can see we have door protection that should move with the door as it opens. So I can close it to zero. And now our protection moves with our door leaf. And this is gonna be the, a very similar technique to what we're gonna do in the next part when we build door handles and push bars and closes, which we're gonna to add to the door as well. So we're almost done. Um, the last thing we need to do is make sure that we go and nest all of our parameters. So we're gonna go and find that protection finish and we're gonna add a shared parameter which I, I currently have set up in my shared parameter file for material doors just for external protection finish, which I'll make instance based and internal protection as well. Now, if your protection is always the same finish, like maybe you're working on a hospital and it's always like an acrovin or a vinyl finish, well, maybe you could make it type based to save yourself having to go and do it for every single door. It's up to you. Alternatively, you might be able to use Dynamo to control your finishes. Okay, what we're gonna do as well is just set the protection height so we're gonna nest in a dimension. So I've got a dimension in my doors, which specifically deals with external and internal protection height. So I'm gonna add the protection height EXT parameter from my shared parameter file. Remember, if you don't have my shared parameter file, that's okay. You'll just need to create your own parameters as you go. So we're gonna add the shared parameter for the internal protection height as well. And at this point, we should be pretty much set up. That should be everything we need. Now we have a door with protection, a leaf, hinges, and a parametric frame that can support multiple rebate conditions. Wow, it's getting pretty good, right? So it's getting it's getting pretty developed. Um, so what we'll do is just orientate our thumbnail view. Go to hidden line mode. We might close our door in the thumbnail. Just set that to zero. Just do a quick purge. Everything's looking good. Fantastic. So the last thing we're going to do is we're going to set the opening angle of our door using Dynamo just for fun. So I'm going to be using a node from the Orchid package. So you will need to download the Orchid package in order to do what I'm about to do. But I'm going to go to Dynamo and I'm just going to open up Dynamo and just build a really small quick script. So once Dynamo boots up, we'll make a new script. I'm going to need to use the Orchid package and I'm going to need to find under Revit family, um, I'm going to need to get parameter. And we're going to be setting the parameter for the active type, which is instance based currently. I then also need to just look for current and I'm going to be getting the current family type from the family document that's open. So I can actually just go and actually say current and I can just get current family family document. This just sources the active document. Um, and as well as this, uh, Orchid by default just sources the current document if you don't specify the family document. 
What I need to do now is add the parameter name for my swing angle. So I'm just going to copy and paste the name of this parameter. I'm going to make a code block, paste it in. And then I just need to make an integer slider. I'm not going to make a number slider because I want to not have like an infinite number of values. I want to be really careful. So I'm going to go from 0 to 180 with a step of 1. And I'm going to associate this value. You should see the node now say it's registering a value, so it's working. It's important to note that I'm in automatic mode, so it's always running. So at the moment, it's actually open by one degree. But if I just go and grab my, my slider, I can open my door. So pretty cool, right? So that's a really good way to test that it can actually satisfy all the angles from 0 to 180. And notice the hinges are updating as well, so you can see that the hinge set is adjusting and it's remaining on the face of the leaf as well. So we've built a pretty intelligent and pretty flexible door family. So hopefully that um that that's pretty exciting. Uh, I was pretty excited the first time I, bu I built a door that could do this. Um, probably in the next part, we're going to focus on just adding some hardware to the door in 3D as well. And I might add an extra part in there that I haven't currently got on my schedule, which is how to build a 2D door leaf and 2D swing angles that can sort of work independently of the 3D door component. One thing I might do before I finish that I did forget to do is I'm going to go to my door leaf and I'm just going to make sure that my door protection, I might just do a select all visible in view, is not visible in floor plan because it's a very detailed element and we don't really want to see it in floor plan. I could also say that I don't see my door protection unless I'm on maybe a uh, fine detail level. I'm just going to save this, reload it back down to the project. Now in floor plan, I shouldn't see those little lines for the very thin piece of door protection on my door. So perfect. Um, that's exactly what we want. Now I can see as well as that, I don't see my, my protection unless I go to fine detail. So now I get more detail when I go to a fine detail. Um, but that's pretty much it for this part. So um, I guess we're going to be moving on um, in the next video to look at adding some door hardware, which is quite a popular topic I get asked about a lot too. It will mostly be face-based, so you can probably guess roughly how the video is going to go already. Uh, but I'll show you some different types of protection, uh, not protection, hardware, and how you can associate it to the leaf at various positions across its face. The files for this will be on GitHub, and I do recommend that you do download them before you go to the next part so that you can stay up to date with the content that I'm using in the series. So thanks for watching. Um, hopefully you're enjoying learning more about building Revit door families. Um, I do make videos two times a week and aim to do so for a while. And if you're not already following and subscribing, uh, feel free to do so. I look forward to seeing you in future videos. Thanks.